Well, welcome to Snooker Pro Tips. Uh, this clip has been asked for by a player in the Bristol area by the name of Jay. Hello, Jay. Uh, we've passed quite a few personal messages now regarding break building. Uh, now, the difficulty I have with, with doing this clip is actually playing and talking at the same time. So what I'm actually going to do is just go through it shot by shot uh, without playing a shot and actually trying to explain uh, why certain positions come about. Uh, if this isn't suitable, uh, I'll I'll do another clip or try and do another clip with pleasure, but I won't be able to talk on it uh, because it's just too difficult to try and play and talk at the same time. I hope you can appreciate that when you're watching this clip. Now, uh, the questions that Jay has asked is sort of looking shots in front uh, and also when to and when not to go into the pack uh, and and break building in general. Now what you will see is when you're watching most of the guys on the TV uh, what they try and actually do is get the, the top pockets as clear as quickly as possible. Obviously this allows the black to go in either corner and, and thus giving them more range of shots to be able to play obviously. So the situation is now that this red, this one here, is actually blocking the black to this corner pocket. Now you could play this red here first but the best red to play actually is this one because what you can do then with this one obviously is pot it to the corner leave yourself a position on the black so then you just take the black to leave yourself on the red and then take this red to leave yourself nicely on the black so from there now this is a position you'd be looking to go into the balls because obviously now this red is here so what you can actually play is to pot the black and screw into the reds. So the black's gone in, the reds have opened out, and then you've finished nicely on this red. And now this is where they're looking, you've already done it once, Jay doesn't seem to think he does it, but I think he does. He looks shots in front, he doesn't seem to think he does, but he actually does. Because you wouldn't make the breaks that you're making in practice and that you're making in your league situations without looking shots in front, it's impossible. So I think you're already doing it. So now once you've got yourself into this position, then obviously what you're looking to now is your next six, 14, 15, 16 points just to keep it nice and simple. So obviously now it's a case of maybe just running this red in to get to the black. And once you've potted the black, you sort of put yourself into this sort of area. And the reason you're putting yourself into this area is because you can give yourself plenty of options. And what you've actually got in this situation is, although it's not quite on the camera, I'll just move it around now. What we've actually got there is two reds to the centre, and this red to the corner, if you're desperate, if it goes. And it just, I think, goes to the corner. So what you've got then is actually a choice of which balls you want to play. Now in this situation, the obvious red would be this one, because you can pop the red to the centre and get the white back into this area. The question now, again, probably would be, should I play a cannon into the reds, or should I play for the loose reds? Well, what I would say to you is, make sure you have a look round, but almost certainly here, you would probably be leaving this alone, because the things that can go wrong are always going to be here, because if you don't get a good cannon, the white stays in there, and you're not going to finish on a red. So what I would say is, from this position, is play the black to in there, and play a cannon on this red. If it is you miss the cannon on the red, you're always going to be on this red here. If it is you cannon the red nicely, then what we do is we stay on this red here. This red in turn then opens up this red. And in the meantime, if it is that red goes where I've, I've put it there, where it's just sort of slid up there, you've now got a red towards the center pocket. So the choice you have from there is do you play for the black, or do you go up for the blue? And this is just basic break building. So obviously now again you look for your 14, 15, 16 points and generate the break from there. Now the other thing that, that Jay has sort of mentioned in his clip is balls on the rail. Now what you should be trying to do with balls on the rail is leave them there as long as possible. For the simple fact of it is they're the most difficult balls on the table. Uh, and what you will see most of the time when you watch, again, you're watching the pros on the TV, the last balls they're sort of coming to when they break building are the ones on the rail. They very rarely develop the balls on the rail 
until the end of the break when they've got to. So if you've got balls on the rail, if the, if the, the table's tight that you're playing on, then obviously you've got to be trying to fetch them off rather than trying to smash them down the rail. If it is, obviously, the table you play on, the bags are quite generous or big, then you can just put it down the rail without any problem at all. But in, in general, what you're trying to do is leave these balls as long as possible where they are. Because, come again, if it is you score uh, round about the 50, 60, 70 mark, tactically, those balls are quite good left on the rail because, obviously, your opponent then can't be potting reds to get himself in a position where he can lay snookers on you. Uh, on the colours or with last red on, those balls are, are quite safe on the rail. Uh, and this is break building in general. Uh, so, again, if we, if we go back now to this situation, we can pop the red there, maybe take ourselves up for the blue, and then from the blue, get ourselves in this area where we're in the middle of the table. I'm not sure I've got that in the, in the shot there just about and you can see there now I'm on three reds as you can see there nice now on three reds uh, this red here I think goes to the corner goes to the middle so actually there are still four reds available and once you take them four reds off you're probably going down to the the five six red mark you're round about the 60 break mark this red also goes it's next to the pink into the corner so there's enough reds there for you to be going on to win the frame once you've won the frame then you can probably become a little bit more creative, play the cannon in there, try and split the reds, and, and hopefully go on to clear the table. Uh, and this is a break building uh, in general. Uh, again, make sure if you do hit the pack that you have a good look round to see what goes where, so you've got a rough map of the table uh, inside your head when you're walking round, because then you'll know what reds go, what reds don't go, if I pop this red, does that free that red? So again, you're looking shots in front. Uh, as I've said, this isn't like one of the normal clips I've done. I've, I've obviously played all the shots there. But again, the job I have with sort of explaining break building or, or showing break building is, is talking and playing at the same time. I'm not going to dub over the top and I'm not going to put little speech bubbles on or anything like that because it's just, it's just too much effort. Uh, so if it is you want to see... Uh, a break or whatever get in touch I'll try and do a clip but there won't be any talking it'll just be me playing uh, and that's it I hope you find this useful Jay I hope you find it helpful uh, but like I've said in the messages that we've passed I think you're already doing the things that I've, I've already explained in this clip I think you're already doing it uh, and probably what you're actually doing is expecting far too much of yourself uh, as regards the standard when the balls come open, no player on the planet makes 100 every time the balls come open. So uh, I think you're actually, you, your game is to quite a good standard. So uh, it's been Snooker Pro Tips. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you do have any comments, uh, please get in touch uh, any way you can. Uh, I'll try and answer them all if I can. If I forget any, any of you out there, get back in touch with me and I will uh, answer everything. And if you have any clips, I'll try my best to put them on for you. It's been Snooker Pro Tips. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you.